Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome uh, everyone in this new meeting of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation, online CMA meetings. Uh, after uh, Eid al-Adha, كل سنة وحضراتكم طيبين. وإنشاء الله تكون عدة عيد سعيد. Uh, today we have uh, two distinguished speaker and uh, moderator for a very hot topic that targeted our usual daily practice in nephrology, both in CKD and uh, hemo and peritoneal dialysis. Uh, we started to uh, tackle anemia in chronic kidney disease by Professor Kamal Akasha in a past lecture, who addressed uh, iron therapy in chronic kidney disease and in dialysis which was in Ramadan. And now the second lecture is uh, regarding erythropoiesis stimulating agents in chronic kidney disease by Professor Mahmoud Amar. Uh, professor Mahmoud Amar is a professor of nephrology and internal medicine at Ophir University. And our moderator today is the Egypt hemodialysis man, head of the hemodialysis chapter in Egyptian Society of Nephrology, vice president of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation, and the head of Hemodialysis chapter in Afran, Professor Ejan Said, Professor of Nephrology and Internal Medicine in Shams University, who is well known to us for his interest and very heavy uh, scientific and learning work in uh, uh, hemodialysis in general and nephrology in general. So I will leave the floor to Professor Hisham to introduce Professor Mahmoud Amara and to lead this meeting. Please, Professor Hisham, floor is yours. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good evening, professor, colleague, and warm welcome again uh, after short uh, vacations for Eid al-Adha. I would like first to thank uh, Professor Dr. Yasser Abdel Hamid for his heavy work and uh, very extensively dedicated for the CMEE, driving forcefully, and always had very good chances to uh, introduce many professors in Egypt. And thanks again for continuity for this CME, Professor Dr. Yes. And today we have another uh, star in nephrology, Professor Dr. Mahmoud Aymara, coming from the fertility land of the Minufeya. And we all know that, uh, that uh, Minufeya is a fertility land of pioneers and uh, intelligence. And he is under the head of uh, Professor Dr. Said Kamis in Minufeya University. Professor Dr. Mahmoud Aymara, uh, personally, I like his talks, and uh, I'm very interested to hear from his side this ESA therapy in chronic kidney disease. We will leave the microphone to the Professor Dr. Mahmoud Aymara, and then we come back again for discussion. Uh, please, Dr. Mahmoud, start. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for all my colleagues and my uh, uh, professors, uh, uh, elegant professor, for introduction for this uh, kind of introduction. Today is, uh, we will talk about the ESA therapy in chronic kidney disease as an overview from the start of the disease to the end of the medications. First of all, we have to recognize our agenda for today. All of uh, our talks will be according to anemia and chronic kidney disease, treatment strategies and erythropoietic protic stimulating agents, ESA, hypoxia and usable factor. One of uh, the major sites of uh, pathophysiology of chronic epidemia and chronic disease, depending on the presence of high, acid, uh, high level of hepatitis and the presence of inflammation and the infection, all may contribute to functional iron deficiency and impair the bone marrow responsiveness to erythropoietin. At the same time, there is a reduction in the production of erythropoietin from the diseased kidney associated with absolute iron deficiency uh, through the malnutrition and the poor absorption. And the same, and, and also the frequent uh, sampling, taking for the frequent lab work uh, leads to more blood loss and as may, might be associated with loss, blood loss in, in the tertiary and disease of hemodialysis. At the same time, there is short lived blood life cell, blood cell lifespan. Uh, also, there is a lot of comorbidities like diabetes and the hypertension and even uh, um, the osteoarthritis. This might be, might be associated with inflammation. Uh, according to other studies, there is a suppression to bone marrow as, uh, caused by a high level of uremia. 
In the same time, there is truncated disease mineral and bone disorders, a deficiency of other vitamins like B12 and folate, and also the use of other medications of, uh, like AS inhibitors. From all of those, there is a pathophysiological processes going through many pathways to participate in the pathophysiology of anemia and chronic kidney disease. The regulation of erythropoiesis may be associated with erythroid marrow through the RPC circulating RPCs or to oxygenation in the presence of the kidney production of erythropoietin. And the other, on the other hand, on the, when the kidney starts to be, to have a problem, there is erythropoietin uh, uh, reduction um, and that's shared with decrease in stimulation of erythropoietin um, uh, uh, bone marrow. The reduction, the hemoglobin and the erythropoietin, the anemic patient with chronic kidney disease may sh show reduction of hemoglobin leads to reduction of auto transport capacity, peripheral hypoxia, Stood with decrease in kidney pretuber uh, cells function leads to more damage, the reduction uh, in serum erythropoietin. This leads to reduction in precursor of uh, RBC cells and the erythroblasts and the reticulocyte redu reduction. All of those become insufficient to produce erythrocytes, leads to reduction of, of hemoglobin, more, more reduction of hemoglobin, and this is leads to more reduction in water transport capacity. Leads and end to anemia. The increased presence of anemia may be as always is associated with the declining kidney, kidney function. As this table shows in the stage one, the presence of anemia might not exceed 5% of the patients. And in stage two, there is no also uh, 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 the reduction or the presence of anemia or defined as reduction of hemoglobin more, less than 12 grams per deciliter, uh, increase also in stage four, most of the patients, more than 50% of the patients have anemia in the stage in the stage of disease or hemodialysis patients, that most of the patients have anemia, more than 75% of all patients. And the definition of anemia associated with uh, related to chronic kidney disease, hemoglobin in patients with men patients less than 13.5 grams per deciliter, while in women less than 12 grams per deciliter. The definition of anemia in the general population less than in men less than 13 per gram per deciliter, and in women less than 12 grams per deciliter. So this is anemia leads to uh, us to seek for it. When you can't seek for anemia, you have to screen for anemia and chronic kidney disease. According to the stage of chronic kidney disease, you have to know if there is no anemia in stage two, three, four, uh, the, the screen might be annually. If anemia is present in these stages, we have to do it every six months. On the other hand, in stage five, if no anemia, six, uh, every six months, if there is anemia every three months. Okay. What we have in the three intermediate strategies of anemia and chronic kidney disease. Other, uh, um, other, 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 my other colleagues in the past of uh, uh, this series of lectures talks about the blood transfusion and talks about actually iron supplementation. Today we will concentrate on erythroid superuses, stimulating agent, ESA, and other additives. This is the strategies we have actually. What about blood transfusion? Same amount of blood transfusion raises of hemoglobin up one by one gram per deciliter. This increase is transient and uh, effectiveness decrease with repeated transfusions. A single unit of blood achieve maximum risk with maximum with minimum benefit. The transfusion suit complications might have incorrect blood content transfused into about 50% of the patients, acute transfusion action in about 15% of the patient, delayed transfusion action in about 14% of the patient. This is a maximum uh, uh, and uh, uh, side effects related to blood transfusion. So what is the alternatives? The alternatives is the presence of heteropoietic stimulating agents. What are these agents? The human recombinant erythropoietin, first of all, erythropoietin alpha and the erythropoietin beta, 
On the other hand, this arithmetic power similars, gamma, engineer the arithmetic the Dara ebutene alpha and the methoxy polyethylene glycol ebutene beta. It's called Mercera. Uh, other arithmetic estimatic agents, including epomimetic peptides and HIFPH inhibitors. These are long acting ASA, and on the other hand, the human recombinant erythroglutein and the erythroglutein biosimilars are short acting ASA. There is a comparison between the uh, erythropoietin like therapy, includes the brand names. Um, the, 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 this is alpha erythropoietin alpha, workers half lifetime four to 13 hours, erythropoietin beta, four to 12 hours, erythropoietin delta, 4.7 to 13 hours, and uh, double routine, this work is for 12 to 9, 39 hours. On the other hand, uh, Mercera, one, uh, 139 to 142 hours. Uh, the FDA approved the, the risk between Alpha and, um, and uh, Mercera and Aronis. Uh, the other are used, but not in USA. Uh, USA. Those of ESA therapy, if we talk about erythroctin Alpha, it takes us to 50 to 100 microgram unit uh, per kg, per kg, three times per week. Dalabutin alpha, uh, 0.45 micro, uh, microgram per kg every four weeks. And if the chronic disease is stage five, yeah, but we have to use this or increase those up to uh, 0.575 uh, uh, microgram per kg every two weeks for Mercera. Uh, the chronic disease uh, stage five use. 0.6 microgram per kg two weeks once in the The guidelines required in other patients with chronic kidney disease with hemoglobin concentration more than 10 gram per kg. We have we have the we have the uh, ability not to use any drug in this situation. So the hemoglobin concentration more than 10 gram per kg not don't use uh, any ESA therapy. For those patients with less than 10 gram per deciliter, we have to take the decision according to the, the rate of fall of hemoglobin concentration before this, the, the prior response to iron therapy. We have to initiate first iron therapy and treatment. And all, all the patients for other with chronic kidney disease is stage five, we, we have to use uh, ESA therapy to be used to avoid having a hemoglobin concentration called flu, nine gram per deciliter, and ESA therapy when the hemoglobin is between nine and 10 gram per deciliter in interstitial disease. We have to individualize therapy according to the situation we have. ESA maintenance and therapy in general, the ESA not be used to maintain hemoglobin concentration more than 11 point gram, one half the, uh, gram uh, per deciliter, and other patients with chronic disease. At the same time, the individualization of therapy must be used as long as a hemoglobin concentration less than uh, 11.5 gram seizure. And all other patients don't initiate, don't maintain the therapy if hemoglobin concentration more than 13 gram seizure. And all pediatric patients receive is a therapy that selected hemoglobin concentration be the range of 11 to 12. This is in the judge. The dose, as we recorded before, according to the type of ESA, we have to recognize the dose and the body weight. In the, in the demonstration, uh, most of the patients taking the uh, ESA therapy in chronic disease before stage five take the, 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 the medication subcutaneously. And those patients on hemodialysis, uh, we, uh, we, might, we might use the, the drugs. Uh, subcutaneously or uh, through IV uh, in the end of the uh, hemodialysis or hemofiltration, but most, most of the cases we take the medication uh, subcutaneously. 
the frequency of administration depends on the body rate of the patient and the rate of, uh, of uh, hemodialysis on those patients with intertertiary disease and even the patient tolerance and preference. Uh, also, the frequency might be uh, all, uh, always uh, co uh, connected with the type of ibutene and the half-life time uh, we mentioned before. In the, in the same time, the evaluation uh, of uh, correcting persistent failure to reach or maintain, maintain intended hemoglobin concentration. A lot of patients may suffer from um, either resistance or unresponsiveness. We have to first uh, recognize what the mean of answer, uh, unresponsiveness and this, um, the frequency of monitoring during the initiation phase, initiation phase uh, measure hemoglobin concentration at least monthly. For Crohn's kidney disease patients, uh, not on dialysis, um, uh, during our maintenance phase, is a therapy measure hemoglobin concentration at least every three months. For those patients on interstitial disease on dialysis, at least monthly. What is the definition of hyperresponsiveness? First, initially, is a hyperresponsiveness. We have to classify patients as having either high responsiveness if they have no increase in hemoglobin concentration from baseline after the first month of easy treatment on appropriate weight based dosing, not graded. And basically, is a high responsiveness which suggests avoiding repeated escalations in either dose than the double the initial weight based dose. If I first of all, and if we measure uh, the uh, hemoglobin after one month of taking appropriate uh, is a uh, dose uh, dose we respond we record this patient as hyper responsiveness and the same time don't use the dose of is more than the double of um, of the dose recorded for the patient in the same time subsequent is a hyper hyper responsiveness we have to classify these patients as acquired is a hyper responsiveness if after treatment with the stable doses, they require two increases in either dose up to 50 pion, 50 percent pion, the dose at which they have been stable in an effort to maintain a stable homogeneous concentration. At the same time, these patients will require either hyper responsiveness, suggest avoiding repeated escalations in either dose beyond the double the dose at which they had been stable. Management of poor ESA responsiveness depends on the evaluation of the patient, either initial or acquired ESA hyper-responsiveness. And for patients who remain hyper-responsive despite correcting treatment causes like inflammation, like a change type of ESA and adequate administration of those, with such individualization of therapy, decline hemoglobin according to the client hemoglobin concentration. Continuing ESA if needed to maintain hemoglobin concentration. Uh, uh, the, the last option is to the blood transfusion. The dynamic of uh, retrobutene resistant ending as shared with ESA dosed by dialysis modality depends on how uh, hemodialysis, the hemodial filtration reduces uh, ERE and ESA needs uh, those uh, hemodialysis patients. Uh, this is the, 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 the response of hemodial filtration and that, uh, on the ERI, uh, uh, actually the hemodial filtration reduces uh, the ERI on, um, uh, on the schedule of using ESA. The situation of ESA resistant and inflammation is recorded. Actually, we have to measure the CRP in patients and also record the presence of malnutrition by measuring serum albumin. The ESA resistance actually depends on the presence of inflammation. And as you show in this, the hyper-responsiveness hyper increases with the rate of increase of CRP at the same time and the other groups and the, with malnutrition, serum albumin um, decreases, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, ESA resistant increases.
Then sometimes we have to do add the job therapy to treatment of these, uh, like vitamin C and vitamin D, vitamin E, folic acid, l carnitine and doxycycline. And at the same time, if we have a problem, it's called the pure red cell aplesia associated with uh, the dosage of uh, uh, ESA. This is actually mediated by antibody mediated uh, BRCA when a patient receiving ESA therapy for more than eight weeks develops uh, the uh, pure red cell aplesia, sudden rapid decrease in the bukovin concentration. This is a healthy diagnosis by um, uh, 0.5 to 1 gram per deciliter per week or requirement or of blood transfusion at the rate of approximately 1 or 2 to uh, packs per week. This means that there is a, a pure red cell aplesia. Also, at the same time, the presence of normal plate Related and white blood cells count, so there is no uh, effect on the bone marrow production. And the, the absolute tetracyte count is than 10,000 uh, microliter. Uh, in this situation, we recommend that ESA therapy be stopped the patient who develop antibody mediated BRCA, BRCA, and begin inside, uh, be used to treat patients with antibody mediated BRCA. What is the complications of using ESA? The ESA, uh, the, the ESA complications recorded in the present following the, the risk of some thrombosis and increased mortality associated with hypertension and associated with cancer progression, uh, diabetic retinopathy. Updates in ESA therapy, new ESA structures using the TAC-EVO mimetic peptides and EVO fusion proteins. Uh, also, antibody again, uh, uh, agonist to EVO receptors, uh, EVO gene therapy, this is delicate EVO, uh, demonization of EVO receptor intercellular domain with CID. Uh, uh, also, there, there was uh, non direct acting uh, drugs like the HIF uh, 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 stabilizers uh, and the activine traps. Hypoxia inducible factor includes hypoxia induced factors. Uh, coordinate the physiological response to systemic uh, hypoxia by altering gene expression in certain cell types, increase in able production in the kidney and in the liver, uh, improve uptake uh, and use of iron in the same time, encourage the right progenitor maturation and the proliferation in bone marrow. Uh, HIV stabilizers uh, are two uh, oxoglutrate competitors that are designed to prevent HIV alpha degradation. HIV, HIF uh, stabilizer primary function uh, by mimicking the hypoxia driven expression of indigenous EVO in the kidney. And this in time feature unique of HIV uh, stabilizer is that they are, uh, they are orally administrated with uh, uh, very good uh, character for the HIF uh, stabilizers. And same time, uh, this is complete erythropoiesis through this. this uh, uh, pathway is so the, the increase airflow routine, increase airborne receptor, and decrease ABCD, and same time to increase transferrin and transferrin transfer receptor expression, and also increase the seroplasmine. There is still a rule in the origin of the for the originator resystematic agent after the biosimilar and the hypoxia induced factor stabilizer approval. So what is the benefits and the uh, backgrounds of, uh, uh, of both of them? Uh, for ESA effective and uh, long clinical experience, acceptable safety profile, no pell burden. On the other hand, uh, high EVO levels, the small hypertension risk, uh, endothelium stimulation, small cardiovascular risk at high doses and or excessive hemoglobin target, small oncologic risk, small thrombotic risk, still expensive. Uh, not effective in the effective ratio of the Please, Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, can I talk? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, okay. What, 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 if we talk uh, about the pros and cons associated uh, with ESAs, uh, the pros is effective, long clinical experience, acceptable safety profile, no pill burden. The cons, high EBO levels, small hypertension risk, 
endothelium stimulation, a small cardiovascular risk at high doses and over excessive hemoglobin target, a small oncologic risk, a small thrombotic risk, still experience in the patient. On the other hand, the HIF stabilizers, the pros include the effective stimulation of endogenous EVO, no hypertension, higher suppression of heavy steam, not influenced by inflammation, better arm absorption, utilization, chemical drug, LDL and cholesterol reduction, effective in other conditions. Because no long-term data, potential DEGFA increase, HL, uh, in cholesterol, HDL in cholesterol reduction, Build burden hemodialysis, possible activation of several genes, selectively oncogenic risk, damage due to chronic hypoxia, exhaustion of EVO stimulation, and the pulmonary hypertension. Potential adverse effects of HIF, PHIF therapy, hepatic toxicity, angiogenesis and oncogenesis, drug, drug interactions, blood pressure changes. Take home message anemia is common and the potential. Severe complication of advanced chronic kidney disease and this stage and disease. The primary etiology of chronic kidney disease related anemia is deficiency of the hormonal erythrobutene. Administration of iron and the erythrobiosis stimulating agents can substantially improve anemia in patients with chronic kidney disease and stage disease. Recent studies indicated that the most patients. Target hemoglobin levels of 10 to 11 gram per seizure are appropriate, targeting the, to higher levels of no benefit and associated with increased risk, increased risks. Optimal anemia management requires thoughtful use of both arm, usually IV and, and ESA, with transfusions as indicated. Important to individualize anemia management and chronic kidney disease and interstitial renal disease patients. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Mahmoud Aymar. It's very comprehensive. You touch uh, a lot of points, and I think there will be uh, some comments as well, uh, some of the questions from the floor. Uh, let me start. Uh, I, I thank you again, but. Uh, what about the Egyptian hemodialysis guidelines? We are in Egypt uh, recording that uh, hemoglobin target between 10 and 11, putting in uh, the advances that uh, higher hemoglobin is risk and more costly. Uh, second point, uh, in my opinion, there is no treatment of ESA unless you improve the dialysis uh, adequacy and is correlated directly to the uremic toxin and its side. Effect. Third point from my side, if you have a patient with anemia and he's still in the uh, stages of uh, two or three, you think that, and I believe that, uh, some uh, other disorders like myelomas, uh, light chain disorders, or blood loss should be highlighted uh, our investigation. So in overall, uh, ESA therapy has a, a revolution from the 30 years uh, right now in the treatment of the anemia associated with CKD and on hemodialysis. Let us start with the Professor Dr. Yasser Abdel Hamid if he has a comment from his uh, experiences in the field. Thank you, Professor Mahmoud, for your uh, uh, very uh, elegant talk and Professor Yan for your comments. Yes, I agree with you totally that we should search for other causes such as secondary myeloma, multiple, especially multiple myelomas in cases of uh, resistant uh, anemia to erythropoietin therapy. Uh, of course, uh, we have some questions in the chat, Professor Hisham. Yes, I will handle that. If uh, you have uh, yes. any other comments, we can go yes, to the I chat. Yes, other comments. We have as well on the, uh, on the board, uh, Professor Dr. Manali Deep. From yes, uh, Tarek University. Tarek, uh, Professor Professor Tarek Antawi are with us. Yes, so we can have a, a short notes from uh, Professor Dr. Amanel Deeb. Professor Dr. Amanel is not online. Okay, we will go to Professor Dr. Tarek Antawi. 
اي ثينك بروبلم كان يو هاندل ذا تشابتر مساء الخير مساء الخير شكرا دكتور هشام شكرا دكتور محمود جود ايفنينج بروفيسور دكتور امان دكتور ياسر اهلا بحضرتك يا دكتور هشام انا بس كان عن في كومنت للدكتور محمود هو في البلاد ترانسفوجن يعني هو حضرتك قلت الحاجات السايد افكت بتاعت البلاد ترانسفوجن لكن المهم جدا في النفرولوجي اللي عشان الترانسبلانتيشن يعني احنا كتير جدا دلوقتي ناس مثلا ممكن يستخدموا هيموجلوبين 8 يروحوا ينقلوا دم وكتير قوي ناس صغيرين ممكن يزرعوا كده بعد كده فيعني ذيس ا كرايم يعني احنا البلاد ترانسفوجن ده حضرتك قلت كل الكوميكيشنز بتاعته ما عدا ان هو عشان الترانسبلانتيشن فدي نقطه sure. مهمه جدا يعني شور 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 اه هننقل دم مثلا العيانين دلوقتي مثلا هيموجلوبين 8 سبعة ونص بينقلوا الناس الصغيرين في السن اللي ممكن يزرع بعد كده فيعني دي مهمه جدا ان احنا نفهم الصغيرين مش كل حاجه نقل دم عادي كده لازم يبقى تو تيك كير يعني تمام آه شكرا جزيلا لحضرتك آه شكرا بروفيسور دكتوره منال وي جو تو ذا تشات رايت ناو وي هاف لا ترانسفيجن از اولسو امبورتنت فور ترانسبلانتيشن ليتر اون The control of blood transfusion. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the patient is on the transplant list, we are to yes. conserve. Transplant some, transplant sometimes, sometimes we have to uh, to give uh, irradiated and washed red blood cells, but it's extremely yes, but not rare, it's rare. But sometimes in uh, in uh, urgency, for example, patient was shock or preoperative. For a major surgery or a GIT hemorrhage, sometimes you have hemoglobin four or five. You have to give uh, blood transfusion. Of is course, even of the patient is going to plan, but we have to go to the irradiated and wash. Uh, of course, we don't we don't speak about uh, yes, emergency sure. surgery, Professor Sham, and in severe cases, but in usual cases, we don't. We are in, not. To blood in general, in general, yeah. you may agree that we we don't see right now uh, a lot of blood transfusion in the dialysis unit. I think uh, I, I, the, the, I, the think of, I think the availability of uh, the bus, uh, the of the refrobutene uh, in, in Egypt uh, and even the uh, health insurance and even uh, uh, reduce the, the rate of blood transfusion most of the hemodialysis and even the chronic disease patients. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a question from Rami Abu Bak. How to convert? Uh, a good question. Uh, thank you, Rami, for uh, uh, highlighting this issue. How to convert from formula to another? Uh, if the patient on erythropoietin and going to dapoiety? Uh, actually, um, uh, we have to recognize the, the dose that first, first uh, of the alpha, uh, if we are, if we are talking with the alpha. Uh, and after this, two pro we have to recognize two things. Rates. Uh, of administration for beta actually every one week or sometimes two weeks after maintenance. Uh, the second thing, uh, those, if we took 100 percentage, we took from the uh, beta 80 percent from the dose of the alpha actually. Uh, and uh, after this, uh, we um, uh, decrease the rate of administration once per week uh, and evaluate it after one month. Uh, let so, me ask you. Uh, on the dark protein, uh, on the dark protein conversion, uh, first it was estimated to be one to 200, uh, yes. depending on the pharma pharmacological equation according to the BIPID and, and uh, this uh, issue in the pharmacy. But on the clinical ground, changing from retropoietin to dark protein actually more than one to two, three hundred, depending on the baseline of uh, uh, erythropoietin uh, alpha or beta dose first. But in general, to satisfy the uh, question that if you are going to change from beta alpha to dark protein, you can calculate that according to one to three hundred, yes, mm. of the last dose. Let, let me ask a question based on your experiences, professors. About is there is any preferences regarding the efficacy of one component in comparison to the other? Do you find in your practice, general uh, uh, everyday practice, a preference of one component regarding the other in our patients, Egyptian patients? If you are using non-generic forms, uh, yes. because non-generic is uh, usually not a stable all the time with the same efficacy in some cases. But if you are using uh, erythropoietin alpha, beta, 
or even using dark protein, all are effective, except if you are not giving the uh, adjustable uh, doses. But in general, both the three common types in Egypt are effective, depending on as well to the patient financial, uh, economics, availability, and the interval and patient compliance. So to my, to my opinion, if you are using uh, one of them and you, you got the target hemoglobin, it is uh, uh, effective. I agree with you. <laughs> Do, uh, and the, the second part of the question about the side effect profile. Professor Mahmoud Amara, do you find a, a difference in regarding the second uh, side effect profile in our patients from your experience or the same regarding the long or short acting, Isa? Yeah, I, I can't catch you. Uh, you can, can you uh, re repeat the question, please? I can, I can do, do you it. have the different, different side effects, different, different side, side effects, effects in between? In between short and long term, a long, yeah. sorry, short and long yeah, acting. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, actually, my my uh, experience with alpha is that there is uh, more uh, risk for uh, hypertension with um, with uh, usage of uh, frequent administration. Uh, uh, on the other hand, the long acting Mercera, uh, in my experience with the, the short uh, usage in Egypt, uh, there is a high frequency of uh, alteration in the level of. Uh, of uh, homoglobin might be overshooting with using the uh, Mercera. I uh, experienced this uh, in more than uh, five or ten patients uh, when I was um, using this um, uh, type of erythroglutin. I think Mercera, I, I remember right that in, was in uh, one of the ESMET uh, talk probably uh, nine years or eight years ago. I discussed that with the, uh, in the port and in the meeting. The, uh, Mercera has a polyethylene glycol attached mm. and it's a very hydrophilic and that's why at the start of launching I said that it is not suitable because polyethylene glycol is a very hydrophilic material. It can be absorbed on the membrane of the yes, yes. So on the absorption of the endothelium. So I don't uh, uh, thought at mm -hmm. that time it will have a successful and for sure, Mercera is coming down after that sh very shortly. Yes, yes, I agree. Being to the uh, polyethylene glycol attachment. Uh, back again to the floor. Uh, huh? From Abu Bakr, uh, still, some patients still complaining from anemia manifestation while they are on the target hemoglobin for end stage kidney disease, although the hemoglobin was 11. We, we have to de de defend against that. Uh, sometimes, definitely, if you have a patient with anemia and dialysis, I call that a very big pain because the dialysis session will not be uh, completed safely. A lot of ischemic heart disease, tachycardia, and et cetera. So what is the effect of the hemoglobin on the dialysis? And if the, the symptoms is persisting, for example, if the patient is still not well being, you have to review back again your dialysis dose, and importantly, check the blood gases and the metabolic acidosis can, can give some of the uh, same symptoms of dyspnea fatigability and other uh, CKD, MBD uh, uh, should be checked. Uh, if you are, have uh, any comment, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, on this question as well? Uh, no, I think I agree with uh, you, Dr. Rashan, for every point, for every point you mentioned before. So uh, Abu Bakr just to check the uh, metabolic profile of the patient and check all the status of CKD and BD. Uh, one of the questions, does hypoxia inducible factors have a role in refractory cases this is from, of uh, this is resistant Mu therapy? This is from Dr. Mawatasim, our coordinator today. Okay. Uh, hypoxia inducible factor. So you have the uh, hypoxia inducible factor stabilizer have a role in refractory case of ESA yeah. resistant therapy? Uh, I think this study was recorded before uh, in um, the patient with ESA unresponsiveness and it was uh, uh, actually um, according to the mechanism of action of HIF, there is many path, uh, ba, 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 uh, physiological processes uh, that uh, might increase the rate of the uh, earth routine even uh, release from the kidney and uh, from the liver at the same time. Uh, also, the, uh, there is a reduction in the level of hepatitis, and uh, uh, also 
um, the, 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 the rate of, uh, of inflammation uh, uh, is reduced with using HIF and it might be uh, su successful uh, in replace, to replace the ESA therapy uh, in, in uh, refractory cases. So a uh, second question is the use of immunosuppression in pure cell aphasia. Uh, I think it's not uh, so recorded. Uh, actually, the, the main it's target a, is to stop. Yes, yes, it's a very high risk even to give yeah, immunosuppression uh, to patients on dialysis or on CKD. Uh, again, from Dr. Maatasim, is very active today. Thank you very much for chatting. What about using sodium glucose transporter inhibitor in improving erythropoiesis in non-diabetic CKD patients and in case of ESA resistance? Uh, I don't see any correlation of that. I don't see also. Uh, the, the rule of and uh, progression towards the in reduction of the progression towards end stage renal disease, and they might we have a role in uh, improving the oxygenation of the peritubular cells uh, in the kidney. Uh, actually, it works uh, mainly on the reduction of um, of uh, proteinuria. Uh, also, uh, uh, it's recorded that uh, it has. Uh, um, uh, antioxidant uh, has uh, antioxidant effect um, in the kidney uh, might reduce the, the inflammation and but, uh, but, but all are speculations yeah, there is no uh, in, in a good way yes, yeah. to that but in general could be or a speculation for that and uh, even in the institution there is no rule for the split for those with the uh, institutions only the answer patients Yes, we, uh, we understand that sodium glucose co-transporters have many potential benefits in patients with CKD in different stages, either in diabetic or non-diabetic, in the CKD progression and proteinuria, as well in others like in diabetes. But it's uh, no direct correlation with the rest of uh, Question from Ahmed Inawi. Uh, welcome, Ahmed, on board. What about erythropoietin in dialysis patients with high blood pressure? And to which level of blood pressure not to give uh, it. Uh, I think it's a good question in clinical practice. Yes, uh, actually the blood pressure, the resistant blood pressure, if, um, if the, the patient exceeds 160 or one, over 100 uh, uh, after the usage of uh, good control uh, drugs, uh, more than uh, four uh, drugs, even in, um, in chronic kidney disease patients, uh, the chronic, uh, let us uh, talk about the chronic kidney disease vision and what entity and those with uh, hemodialysis and the other entity. Uh, and those with chronic kidney disease patients who have recognized their blood pressure more than 160 over 100 uh, after the usage of four drugs, uh, record, uh, um, uh, four full dose drugs, uh, we can recognize the hypertension if it's related to erythroblastin. Uh, and actually, uh, we can reduce the, the rate of this blood pressure if we stop uh, erythropoietin for at least two weeks and measure blood pressure again. Uh, for those with end stage renal uh, the, uh, disease, uh, we have to check first the uh, uh, water, uh, water uh, condition in the patient, or uh, if there is. Uh, 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 dry body weight is not effective. Uh, we have to reduce the, the, the increase that the duration of uh, of hemodialysis before the uh, discontinuation of uh, ESA. Uh, and uh, uh, if there is a resistant case of hypertension, we have uh, to recognize uh, that it might be a complication of uh, atherosclerotic processes that happen with uh, hemodialysis, hemodialysis patients more than uh, the relevance between the, uh, the relationship to Yes, uh, you highlight a very important point of hypervolemia in CKD and uh, on dialysis, and its correlation to hypertension. As well, hypervolemia decreases hemoglobin because of the dilutional effect. Yes, 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 yes. So we, you have to decide which target of the hemoglobin when the patient re receives his uh, dry weight. And that's why, as well, we recommend to have a template for hemoglobin testing in the midweek session and patient on regular dialysis. Uh, we have as well from uh, uh, Rola Osman. Uh, Rola, I know Rola is very active uh, yes. 
She the commented team. about uh, our speech about uh, the use of. Uh, yes, just to say media. hello to uh, Rola Osman and uh, give welcome filter on board. Give, and she, she stated to give filtered and radiated blood if needed in case yeah, of trans it, transplantation. Sure, so, sure. Just welcoming Rola on board. Uh, she's an active member on the CME. So yes. this, is, this is our ending of the uh, question on the chat. Yes. And I will leave the, uh, the microphone for the, the post and the driving of the CME uh, if any other uh, needs to, to highlight or just to close and conclude. Uh, thank you, Professor Mahmoud Amara, for uh, your uh, highly illustrative talk, and Professor Hisham for uh, leading this discussion, illustrating some important points regarding uh, ESA therapy and chronic kidney disease. Of course, I think this needs multiple sessions, one and one and more, to get the maximum experience in this very important topic that we face in our everyday and our daily practice. Uh, Professor Mahmoud highlighted the mechanisms of physiology in brief and uh, in the targeting uh, points uh, one by one by one, how to treat, how to use ESA therapy, how uh, to use uh, different compounds, how to transform, uh, how to target pure uh, ESA resistance and some of the new therapies regarding anemia and chronic kidney disease. Uh, no more questions in the chat and no more comments. Professor Hisham and excuse me to close. Thank you, Professor Mahmoud. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hisham, for this uh, lecture and for this session. Thank uh, you very much for all. Well, thank you all attendees for sharing and sharing the discussion. Our coming session will be next Wednesday in the same time, 9 p.m., inshallah. Uh, Dr. Osama Shahat will speak about his point of interest and speak point of interest in peritoneal dialysis. We will speak about peritoneal dialysis solutions uh, their composition and effect. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Shukran. Shukran.